it has been a year since Hamas attacked uh, southern Israel on October 7th, 2023. And I have wrote, I've written a Substack article regarding this. And you can read it alongside this video as the link is in the description below. But I'll provide, I'll provide or give uh, or say uh, a variation, uh, some variations in this video. But then again, yeah, uh, it's exactly the same. So here's the Substack article. For Catholics, October 7th is a day of victory against the Ottoman Turks uh, at the Battle of Lepanto. The date of October 7th has been established as the date of uh, where the Feast of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary is being celebrated. However, in recent times, the Muslim world also called this date their own day of victory against what extremists and extremists and sympathizers call its war against the Jewish state of Israel. On the other hand, the Jewish world both within the Holy Land and across the globe consider October 7th as a grim reminder of their complacency during Judaism's most important festivals, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, and Yom Kippur, which normally uh, is celebrated every October. With Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calling the Hamas attacks exactly a year ago uh, by the time that I wrote this article, its own version of the United States' 9-11, but multiple times over. Now, wherever people locate themselves in the discussion regarding the current war in the Middle East and its escalation into Hezbollah-controlled southern Lebanon in recent weeks uh, that was triggered by a series of phager explosions, October 7th is not only a litmus test to the common humanity we all share, but also a moment of self-reflection as to how disagreements and outright contempt breed xenophobia. The world already knows the basic facts regarding October 7th. Over a thousand, maybe 1,200, 1,400, depending on the estimates, of Israelis and other nationalities were killed by Hamas fighters. And, uh, and when the latter spilled out of Gaza and into southern Israel uh, on that day, almost uh, more than a year ago by the time I'm recording this, and scores more were captured. Now, the Israeli de defense forces eventually regained control over the territory, but the casualty count was so severe that people across the country, which is at the time in a very complicated political turmoil, set their differences aside and focused on at least grieving the loss of life and bringing the hostages back home safely. And at most, especially in the case of Jewish extremists, yes, they exist, avenge the shame brought to their country by making Hamas pay dearly despite the fact that the group was heavily embedded it has heavily embedded itself within Gazan society now for pro palestinian supporters on the other hand this was a day of victorious resistance against the state of israel and made spontaneous marches across the world since then in one of the first marches after October 7th, uh, the October 7th attacks in Sydney, one of Australia's largest cities, the xenophobia hit fever pitch when some of the protesters chanted F the Jews and allegedly gas the Jews after shouting the Islamic or while they're shouting the Islamic takbir or exclamation Allahu Akbar, but that's, uh, th that's a different uh, story. However, Local police later claimed that the, uh, the alleged chant gas the Jews was actually wears the Jews. But either way, people of goodwill and common sense see these chants as xenophobic. And to, cred to the credit of the organizers of the protest, they immediately called it out and kicked out those who participated in such chants. And while such chants and their unfortunate... Uh, Incidents in pro-Palestine rallies were reported in the days and months since October 7th. The xenophobia cuts both ways. Many reports, and to be fair, some of them are unverified, 
say that Israeli settlers on the West Bank, the other Palestinian majority majority territory in the Holy Land, land were allegedly committing atrocities on Palestinians before, during, and after October 7th, which bolstered activists and unfortunately those who support the current thing to hold multiple-day rallies and even encampments mimicking those in Gaza, uh, particularly in colleges and universities in, the, in North America to, and elsewhere in the Western world to push the narrative home. And yet, many Arabs and Muslims see the, in, the inclusion of activists who run in opposition to Islamic doctrine, particularly on sexual orientation, as an abomination to the great cause of the liberation of Palestinians in the Holy Land. Ironically, there was even a recent move by a certain person, or a recent dare, I uh, should I say, uh, I should say, by a certain person named Gregory T. Angelo of the campaign group New Tolerance, who dared LGBTQ plus activists, particularly those calling out, uh, calling out those who hold placards such as Queers for Palestine, to hold a pride parade in either of the Palestinian territories, either in Gaza or the we- or the West Bank, in exchange for one million dollars. Come to think of it, that's that's I don't know. I don't know if you're going to call it insane, but it is uh, in my standpoint. Now, personally, this all of these things that have been happening in the past year are so confusing. And, and it certainly is. There is so much to talk about regarding this very large can of worms. And, I am, and if there is something that I have been right all along is that the Middle East situation in the Holy Land is a large can of worms. But to tie all these in, the world is anxiously anticipating something worse, as worse as World War III, but is also hoping for the best, for peace and goodwill. Pax et bonum. This is actually the motto of the Seraphic Order of Friars Minor, more known today as the Franciscans. Perhaps it is divine intervention that the Feast of the Order's founder, St. Francis of Assisi, is commemorated and celebrated every October 4th, close to the anniversary of this pivotal moment in our world's history. Apart from from his environmental and mystical experiences and a hymn that has since been featured in a 1980s British comedy show, Francesco di Assisi, is also attributed to a prayer that should remind people of goodwill to seek the peace the world cannot give, especially now. And let me, and let me conclude this video by reading to you that prayer. Make me, O Lord, an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is offense, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant, O Lord, that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in forgetting that he is found, it is in pardoning that he is pardoned, it is in dying that he is born to eternal life. Amen.